I know that the NFL stands for not for long, but I hope this rumored cut for the Denver Broncos makes it more than the five months he has been a Denver Bronco. We're going to break down that rumor and so much more in this video. If you're new to the channel, I'm Ben. I'm a diehard Denver Broncos fan. Uh, and before we dive in, we're going to be talking about a wideout on the cutting block. I want to know, other than Rod Smith and Ed McCaffrey, who is your all-time favorite Denver Bronco receiver? Those ones. Uh, and we'll take DT off the list, too. Uh, Cause those two like are everybody's favorite, but I was just thinking back to y'all remember Brandon Lloyd, like making behind the back catches. And like, I've never seen hands like that. And it was like the circus catches were better than just like the, the easy ones. Right. Like that. I've never seen crazy catches like that. He was Odell Beckham jr. Before Twitter. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments, who is your favorite all time Denver Bronco receiver? Who's not Demarius Thomas, Rod Smith or Ed McCaffrey. All right. So the, the rumor of the day, which is wild to me, especially with, with big receivers going down like Hollywood Brown is down, CeeDee Lamb is holding out, Ayuk is out. So, like, teams need a wide out. And uh, there is a report here on Oregon Live, and then it's on all over Twitter, that the Denver Broncos are considering uh, cutting Troy Franklin and hoping he makes it to our practice squad. Um, so I'll, I'll be the first to admit that uh, I was watching for him a ton in the game on Sunday and he didn't get a target until I think the fourth quarter and it, it was hard to to see him like he just he did not get the separation that you saw out of Tim Patrick and he didn't look like he belonged out there. I think there can definitely be a steep learning curve for that receiver position. But um, yeah, he has not shown out in camp. He's had a couple flashes, but this is, here is saying that um, this is the Oregon Live who covered him all throughout college and was saying the truth here, which is he's fallen behind Devon Vele. That is so clear in that Vele was essentially running with the ones in a way um, that it was like when Cortland and Tim Patrick were off, Vele was in, and, and you just see the way Sean talks about Vele. You're also hearing reports out of camp that Troy Franklin is getting yelled at a lot by the receiver coach, which to me is also a good sign because it, it shows they haven't given up on you if, if they, you know, there was really infamous reports of how like eventually they just stopped coaching Paxton Lynch, which is why he was crying on the sideline. They, they gave up on it. They knew we'd seen a ceiling. So I don't think they've given up on him yet, but I also, uh, I don't see how he could play special teams. But I, I think if we did cut him knowing that even at the end of the college football season last year, there was rumors that he could be a first round pick and for him to drop to the fourth. And we went and got him. Sean Payton seemed excited that he was there. Bo Nix backed him up saying this dude does work hard and all these reports that he doesn't work hard are false. Uh, so let me know in the comments what you think. Like, uh, should the Denver Broncos move on from Troy Franklin? You know, at some point, the Denver Broncos, and I've been saying this, we are going to cut a player who is going to go and make another team because all these positions are like, oh, I know we only usually keep six, but this year we could keep seven. And we're trying to do that at every single position. Like already we're talking, hey, we need to keep three quarterbacks. Well, that means you need to keep less of another position or we need to keep four running backs. And so we're at that place where when you see all of a sudden – uh, outside linebacker um, in Coombe start flashing. Like I was planning on him not being on the team. Now he needs to be on the team because he's a beast. And uh, if we want to keep Blake Watson as a running back, like we're really at a point now and it's, it's a great problem to have. But I, I really, as I look at this receiver room, I don't see how you have space for uh, Jalen Virgil, who is a great returner, how you have space for, obviously I think the locks are Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick is a lock. Uh, just looking at how the rest of the team kind of responded to his first catch, the separation he got. Sean Payton is so intentional with everything. There is no way that uh, Stidham's first pass being to Tim Patrick was by accident. That was by design. Um, being like, hey, man, you've been out for two years, and you're back on this team. You're a leader of this team. So I think Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, Josh Reynolds, Mims are all locks for this team. Vele is a lock for this team. Virgil is a great returner. We know little Jordan Humphreys is a favorite of Sean Payton. And now we're seeing like this new slot, uh, you know, slot receiver type position. Bandy has been catching everything thrown at him uh, and is a great punt returner as well. So you're at eight right there. So I, I don't see a world where Troy Franklin and Tim Patrick can make this, this team. So I, I really, it seems very harsh to cut a guy who was a formerly rumored first round draft pick, but I'm also being like, who are we going to cut on here? And that is a, a fantastic problem to have. While we do not have 
Devontae Adams as like a number one wide out. We have a deep wide receiver room and a lot of different types of receivers who can really run Sean Payton's system that uh, Sean Payton thrives on on having like his prototypical wide out body type. He talked about that uh, and how he was so impressed when he played the San Francisco 49ers and saw the receivers get off the bus and how big they were. So we got these big dudes like Patrick and Vele and Sutton, and then we have guys who are great in the middle. And he talked about inside out versus outside in, and then we got Josh Reynolds who – can run slants and is incredible there. And then we've got these slot positions with Sills and, and Bandy. So that that's going to be a really tight thing to watch um, for sure. Um, hearing Vele come out here and talk about Bo Nix was very, very cool. Hearing him just say like what makes Bo Nix so different and makes him such a leader. And this got me like crazy hyped up, but listen to um, the reporter pushes him and says, like, well, you say he's a leader. Give me an example of how he's a leader, and this is the kind of way I want my quarterback talking to my offensive line and to my huddle. Like, there, uh, for example, on the fourth and one, um, it was fourth and short, and he came up and told the old lines like, hey, guys, can we get one yard? Can we get one yard? So things like that, you know, he, he demands that leadership. He demands, a, you know, greatness from us, and I, I think that makes everybody better around us. So Bo Nix is not only – talented scoring on every possession other than the fumble but he is a leader stepping up and asking for accountability he seemed intense in his his pro days and his combine and all of that but man you see the players like it they players at this level want to be held accountable that the nathaniel hackett clown show and the food trucks and all the fun like that wears off if you're not winning and winning is a lot of fun and so i think that is exactly what bo Nix is bringing with his leadership um, very impressed with uh, with him. Uh, other cool news is seeing some of the player grades come out from uh, the game and, and just being excited about that. I mean, we're talking here. Look at our uh, a player I didn't even mention who had an incredible um, player grade would be Brandon Johnson. But the one I'm most encouraged by is I don't have a horse in a race as to who is going to be the other cornerback outside of Patrick Sertan, my initial prediction was that that was going to be Riley Moss, but amazing to see all the hype and all the film breakdown of how Chris Abrams drain looked out of Mizzou. Man, if he can step up into that position, it'd be super fun if it was Moss because we picked him early a couple years ago. But man, I don't care who it is. Let's give us someone great. And it's awesome to see that this could be him right here. And knowing that Chris Abrams drain actually did play against some ones in this preseason game. So he wasn't graded so highly based on playing a bunch of schmucks because Pat Sertan was out. Chris Abrams drain got in earlier than he would, um, which also is great news about how our defense looks like there. You know, we were missing three starters on defense and we still dominated time of possession. We held Jonathan Taylor to nothing. We Anthony Richardson that everyone's so hyped on did not look like a problem. I'm, no longer even nervous about playing them. Like, I think we're going to be fine against the Colts when we play them in the regular season. Uh, hearing, again, more and more players out there who are very plugged in come out and rave about Bo Chapman Nix, including Robert Griffin III. So just really cool seeing here that uh, his quick release that we see, and and I completely agree with, with that take. Um, other really good news um, that I, I don't want to – I a couple weeks ago I did a video on – um, Josh, uh, Justin Herbert's injury. And I, that was probably a little distasteful. I don't want to be rooting for other teams being injured, but what I am excited about is, uh, and this is a solid wood desk that I'm knocking on. We have had tremendous inter- injury luck it was dating back to last season. And we're just seeing dudes across the league dropping like flies. We see Hollywood Brown will be out at least the first two weeks of, um, the Kansas city chiefs opener. When you combine that with Rashid Rice being suspended, they're in, in a lurch there when it comes to a receiving option that they're really all their eggs are in Xavier Worthy's basket. And who cares how fast you run in your underwear? Like you got to actually perform as a receiver. And I, I haven't seen that out of him yet. Uh, and then looking JJ McCarthy, torn meniscus. And depending on uh, what type of surgery he needs, like he could probably miss this entire year. And then just seeing this report out of San Francisco that they had to cancel joint practices because they have 26 injuries. And just hearing that we played tough, we played extremely physical against the Colts. We had all the energy. It wasn't like we were, 
sitting back and not trying hard, and and we still came out of that game with a pretty good injury update. I think Art Green um, was injured on that play, and then we hear that Lucas Kroll had a toe injury, although Sean Payton said it was not serious and it's just a toe injury. So uh, tons and tons to be excited about and a lot to believe in. My kids took my basketball, so I'll, I'll destroy it with it. Oh, man, maybe I should start shooting footballs. <laughs>